Live from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Riverbed Disrupt, brought to you by Riverbed. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, and we're here with a special presentation of River, Riverbed's Disrupt Conference. It's hashtag Riverbed, and Stu Miniman and I will be covering this event all afternoon. We're starting at you know, 12 noon sharp here, and it will be going till well into the evening uh, with a number of guests. We've got some folks from Microsoft coming on, Palo Alto Networks, senior executives at Riverbed. We've got some customers coming on from Hertz and Shell, and we're really excited to be covering this transformation from what uh, an industry that Riverbed really popularized to in, in wide area networking, and, and it's now, of course, with the cloud and, and, and software defined is really, really shifting. Riverbed's a company that ro rose very rapidly. Its ascendancy, you know, they soared to a billion dollars as a public company. They were the hot stock, and they kind of hit a wall. They were in that sort of, you know, wide area networking niche, WAN optimization niche, and then began to sort of diversify, cut cost, and, and get, get, you know, acquisitive. Wall Street didn't like that, they ended up going private, but they had a, a three plus, well over $3 billion valuation, extremely successful company, uh, but of course Wall Street is kind of impatient, gone private, and now are in the process of, like many companies that we see doing that, of retooling. So, welcome to New York City, it's great to be working with you. Thanks Dave, great to be here with, with you. Uh, you know, love being here in New York City, we're just a block or so away from uh, you know, Wood World Trade Center, the Freedom Tower, you know, gorgeous weather down here. Uh, and yeah, they, they started off, you know, Riverbed's been around for 14 years. Uh, same, you know, co-founder Jerry Canelli, you know, still the CEO, uh, been with their, the, them since, you know, before cloud was something we talked about. Uh, but, you know, Dave, we, we've talked many times about how, uh, you know, networking can really be, you know, a choke point for a lot of the technologies we've been talking to. You think back to the 90s, the XSPs, one of the reasons they failed was just networking couldn't allow me to you know, put my data, put my applications far away from where I am, and if you talk about mobility, you talk about you know, kind of the digital uh, transformation that companies are going through, being able to you know, reach my application, have the performance, and not, you know, I, I shouldn't have to worry about where my data is and where my people are, and of course, that requires a lot of complexity and a lot of moving pieces on the network, and Riverbed feels that they are you know, in the best location to solve that problem, thinks that we need you know, a redo in networking, of course, networking's been dominated by Cisco uh, you know, for, for such a long time. So many pieces here. This whole transformation from kind of WAN optimization to SD-WAN is something I'm excited to dig into with the you know, practitioners, the Riverbed people, and their partners here uh, throughout the day. Well, the company's made its hay, Stu, on faking out the speed of light, right? And just sort of optimizing network traffic. And to your point, you know, the bottleneck, the source of the bottleneck is changing. Um, it, it, is, it is shifting, it used to be the spinning disk, you know, now with flash storage, it's, it's getting pushed out to the, <laughs> to the network, right? And the network, your, your wheelhouse, is sort of the, the new choke point. And, and what's happening, we always talk about traffic moving from north-south to east-west, the flattening of the network. And here's a company that really, I mean, has done a really good job of competing with Cisco. I mean, it's one of the few companies that has, has been very, very successful against Cisco, 50 plus percent market share. I'm sure it's a leader in the you know, magic, magic quadrants from Gartner. But now has to shift into this area of application performance management, end-to-end -end visibility, branch networking, um, whole new ball game. What are the, what are the synergies between the core uh, uh, fundamental products that this, this business has been built on and these new uh, adjacencies, in your opinion. Yes, yeah, so, so, so Dave, you know, I was talking to some of my peers here and say, you know, why won't Cisco just dominate this market like they have so much of networking? And if you look at the individual components, Cisco's got a lot of them. Cisco's made big acquisitions, they, they've done their own development, um, and what you heard in the keynotes this morning is Riverbed saying, you know, we've got all of these pieces. You know, you need branch, you need cloud, uh, I need to understand uh, you know, the, the WAN optimization is still critically important because you know bandwidth costs have come down, but I need to be able to shrink that pipe, um, and I need to be able to understand the applications as well as be able to orchestrate across all of these various pieces. And things are moving and changing all the time, and it's 
not something that I can have some admin sitting there. It, it's not like you know somebody calls and says, hey, uh, I'm going to access my application. Let me call IT and let them know that, hey, I've flown across the country. No, I, I, I just access it and, and hope that I can get to my data. Um, and so it, it can't be manual. It can't be somebody tapping away at a CLI uh, on a single device. I need to have more holistic solutions that span that, and that's the, the whole steel families uh, that Riverbed has uh, throughout their product line. And, and the other thing, Dave, I, I know you're going to be digging into, we've talked a lot about companies going private. You know, here's Riverbed, a company that was you know, a, a public company, done really well, it's gone private, it's divested itself of a couple of pieces, it sold a uh, traffic manager uh, to Brocade, it sold a cloud storage appliance to NetApp, and it's made a couple of acquisitions which are critical to how they're moving forward. It was Eternity on the end user experience, and Osito was a German company that's part of the SD-WAN pieces, so really internally retooling, rejiggering, uh, you know, making the company you know, move forward, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if they're going to IPO again uh, sometime in the future, now that they're, you know, believe they're positioned and targeted uh, for a market, Dave, that people are saying it will be billions of dollars soon, but uh, in 2015, I haven't seen anybody that actually has a concrete number on the SD-WAN space, but it's definitely less than a billion dollars, and it's growing and exciting. There's startups and a lot of people are working here, but it's still something that is really very nascent uh, today. So, the, st steel is the, the rubric, the sort of syntax that's used. Uh, steel head uh, is sort of the, the flagship sort of announcement product, back, going back to 2002 to 2004. Was, the company started in 2002, really to attack latency. And, and then Steel Central, Steel Fusion, uh, and, and, and these are now increasingly acquisitions that they brought in uh, to provide end-to-end -end visibility, but also software-defined uh, uh, WAN at the edge. Um, so that's a whole new opportunity for them, and they really heard a lot of talk this morning about the branch, the branch office. Branches are different. Uh, they need connectivity, they need access, some of them are hybrid, some of them are pure plays, some of them are stateless. So, you know, lay out the, the portfolio as you understand it, we'll get it, into it with, with guests, but give us the, the high level lay of the land. Sure, sure. Dave, so, so starting with, you said it was the Steelhead, which is their core WAN optimization product, that is the flagship product, is still core to what they do, and is a component that fits into a lot of pieces. Uh, for example, uh, you know, the SD-WAN piece is Steel Connect, and they're going to merge those together, and you can actually buy it as software, which I can spin that up in the cloud. Like we've seen, uh, Dave, in storage, all of these things, it's a physical appliance, but I can also make it virtual, and if I can have it virtual as software, can I put it in the cloud? Microsoft, we're going to have here talking about what they do with Azure. They also partner with AWS, and they've got a partnership with IBM on SoftLayer and thousands of service providers uh, that they're working with to be able to uh, you know, tie into these environments. So, uh, you know, start with Steelhead. Uh, the Steel Connect is the SD-WAN uh, piece. Steel Fusion uh, is an edge device. Uh, they call it actually hyperconverged, which is a little bit different uh, from kind of the you know, VMware, vSAN, Nutanix type pieces, but it is compute, storage, and network all put together for certain applications, either networking services, uh, file and print, or it can be business applications that I want to have at the edge. Um, and then, uh, But it's the, lightweight the, storage, right? Yeah. It's not, it's not it, Nutanix. It's 100 terabytes, yeah. and it's not the highly scalable, flexible, I'm not going to be putting dozens of nodes, it's, you know, this is a box that I want to have at that branch location, because as we know, as we look at IoT in certain environments, there's certain applications that there's that data gravity at the edge, um, and th there's some stuff that I need to, to, to move to the core. Um, they've also got uh, th their orchestration and management tools, uh, it, you know, so some of the rest of the, 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 the Steel Central uh, pieces. So yeah, a, a lot, lot of terminologies in the portfolio, all of them are steel. Uh, we've got some of the general managers for those groups that are going to help us dig into it. Um, but what you like to hear is uh, things like how they're working in cloud environments, customers that we talk to, they're doing SaaS, they're doing public cloud, and they're keeping stuff on-prem. And networking has to be that, you know, interconnecting fiber, fibers or interclouding. Uh, we actually spent a lot of time last uh, week or two ago at VMworld talking about how VMware is doing NSX. Uh, VMware doesn't really have nearly the branch networking that Riverbed does, uh, but everybody in the network space is tackling this problem um, of you know, just multiple environments from on-prem to public cloud and SaaS, and how do I manage uh, applications between them. Uh, so you know, Riverbed's in, in a hot area. So the big, the big competitor, obviously, is Cisco, uh, but <laughs> VMware and Cisco are competing, so obviously VMware is a form of competition with, with NSX, and then of course, you know, you've got Juniper, obviously high-end, 
you know, cloud service providers, but, but as well as Arista. So, yeah, and, 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 and Arista doesn't do the WAN so much, but even Dave, you know, Microsoft's here as a partner, Amazon's a partner, but how much as these become software do those giant cloud providers bake some of it into the environment? We know that Microsoft has a much stronger hybrid push than Amazon does, uh, but as it turns into software, these lines all blur. Well, you saw that happen with the local area network. Mm -hmm. Will it happen again with the wide area network? Why or why not? So, in, in what way? In terms of the, the, these, these large cloud uh, providers usurping you know, that functionality and bringing it into their own set of sets of services. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, the, the space that R Riverbed plays in, I, I think they've got their, they're differentiating, they've got their IP built in, you know, years of doing this, um, they, they maintain differentiation, uh, and, you know, I, th I think there's a strong play for them going forward. Yeah, so this company's private company, since they've gone private, they've actually grown, at least according to reports that, 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 that we've had, uh, and they're restructuring, uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't even say that restructuring, what they've done is they've shed some non-strategic assets and they've acquired many others, and they're doing that without the shining bright light of Wall Street, so they're able to do that at their own pace, write their own narrative, and they're readying, ostensibly, for another IPO, that's not the only option, but it's interesting, Stu, private equity these days, it used to just be about sucking all the cash out of the company and then whatever's left, throwing the carcass to whomever wanted it. Now it's about the long game, investing in these companies, acquiring companies, and, and really restructuring them for longer term growth so they can have larger exits. And um, it's a really interesting play on in the private equity market. They've, they've identified undervalued tech companies. We've seen, you know, obviously Dell gone private, now EMC gone private, BMC gone private, Click is going private, which is also taken private, I believe, by, by Toma Bravo, the same private equity firm that uh, partnered up with, uh, with Riverbed, of course Riverbed, so it's a big trend. Public markets aren't so attractive anymore, but they're making the bet that they will come back as a source of, of exit. Yeah, Dave, so you know, we're not far from Wall Street. We need the, the update. It's no longer Gordon Gecko you know, buying something, selling off all the pieces. Uh, you know, it's been a really interesting narrative to watch. You know, it was you know, Riverbed, Dell, uh, you know, Rackspace, all of these companies that are going private uh, and you know, retooling and moving forward and you know, being successful. Why let the VCs have all the fun? Okay, keep it right there everybody, this is theCUBE, we're live from New York City. We'll be right back after this short break. My name is Dave Vellante and